All right, guys, welcome into another episode of New Pod here on NotFest.com. As always, I'm Joshua Toomey. That is Ro Coley. And this week, we are joined by John Wysocki, formerly of Stained. And we're going to talk all about Break the Cycle, man. And uh, this is a monster, monster record. And diving into it the last few days, I was just like, Jesus Christ, the hits keep coming, man. Right. <laughs> it was a couple. <laughs> well, John, man, welcome to the show, man. How are you today? I'm doing good. Thanks, guys, for having me. I appreciate it. For sure. Absolutely. All right, man. Well, the uh, Break the Cycle released May 8th, 2001. Uh, what do you kind of remember kind of leading up to this record? Obviously, the previous record was big outside kind of hit on the, uh, the uh, well, I think, what, Family Values tour, you know, the yes. acoustic version. So, I mean, a lot of, lot of stuff going into this record, man. What do you remember at that time? Well, the two biggest hits on there, obviously, are Outside and It's Been a While. And uh, those songs were actually uh, written before. I mean, they were never supposed to be Stain songs at first. And uh, our producer at the time, Josh Abraham, he he had heard the songs. And he's like, why aren't we putting this on a record? You know, he wanted to know who wrote it and this, that, and the other thing. And like, you know, so <clears throat> so that was, that was kind of, we were kind of like, well, that, okay, why not? You know, so we kind of made our our own version of it, the stained version of it. And, um, and then, <clears throat> so we were in between dysfunction and break the cycle. And we were out on tour with Limp Bizkit, Kid Rock, like a bunch of other bands. But, uh, that night that Fred got up and, and did it with Aaron on stage, that kind of opened the door for break the cycle, um, coming out of the gate so strong. Yeah. Um, so yeah, well, it was kind of just like, we went away to go record break the cycle between the two records. And that was kind of like, almost like the teaser going into the record. So, um, and we didn't lead out with that song. We didn't lead up. Uh, that wasn't the first single, right. but, um, <clears throat> it, it did help, you know, uh, blow the record up and, you know, catch people's attention. I guess they liked the song and that's that. It, it um, is funny. I've never, I've never not said Biloxi like Fred says it on that. <laughs> I'm like Biloxi. Biloxi. <laughs> this is real. Yeah. So oh, when, yeah. You, when you say it wasn't meant to be a stain song, what kind of song was it supposed to be? Well, me and Aaron had played in this band before. Um, if not before stained, it was kind of during. You know what I mean? But we still hadn't really uh, kind of hit hit yet. You know, stain wasn't really like you know on the. We were we were in the vision. We weren't on the map yet. You right. know what I'm saying? Right. So, uh, <clears throat> and so those songs were were written by mostly Aaron. You know, he wrote the songs, and uh, and so there was a recording. A friend of ours who was in that other band that I was just talking about <clears throat> uh, had brought over at the time. It was a cassette tape. And uh, brought that over, and it was some of the stuff that we were doing at the time with this other band. And Josh had heard, Josh Abraham, who was producing us at the time, uh, had heard the songs, and he's like, why are we not recording these? And we're like, I don't know, we just didn't think of it, I guess, you know? It's just, just they were just two, two more songs, you know? Right. But, uh, you know, Mike added his part, Johnny added his part, and, and you know, I was actually playing... Uh, I played actually the whole song kind of turned out a little bit different, really. So, um, yeah, we just pieced it together as a stain song and with the sounds and everything, it just, you know, with the, uh, baritone guitars and, and the low tune bass and stuff like that, you know, it just turned, we turned it into that. Well, if you're, if you're playing it with another, with another project, another band, were there other band members in this other band that were upset with you guys kind of taking those songs to, to stained? Uh, yeah, I think they were compensated though. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, they weren't, you know, I'm sure they weren't jumping for joy just because we did, you know, we did end up using those, but, okay. uh, yeah, at the end of the day, it was, it was mostly Aaron who wrote songs. So, um, yeah, that's that. All right. Did he write all the lyrics like to all the songs or? Yes. Yeah. He, he wrote main lyricist. Yeah. He, he was definitely a main lyricist. There's there's another there's an example of where he had asked all of us to like write lyrics. So I don't know if he was running out of ideas or whatever, but 
I, I remember I presented like a whole half a book of <laughs> lyrics, right? And he didn't use any of them. Yeah, this is like <laughs> so, this is light. This is nice. Here, yeah, here, yeah. Here comes well, the drummer with more ideas, <laughs> right? Well, no, it wasn't just me, but yeah. you know, uh, no, I think you know, he just everything is all written by him lyrically. Hmm. Yep. Well, man, uh, the five singles off this record, five times platinum, debuted at number one on Billboard, man. Uh, uh, just so many accolades on this one. So let's dive into it, man. Uh, first track is Open Your Eyes. Mm-hmm. What do you remember of that? Uh, you know, And it was just killer opening riff. Um, <clears throat> the lyrically, man, I think it's crazy is, is like... It, it's still relevant to this day, especially with like only fans and things like that, you know, cause you've got your, you know, your daughters are porn stars and right. you know, your sons are selling drugs and things like that. And, you know, and then there's even like a TV show out there. Like, what would you do? Yeah. I think it's even called that. And, and it's like, you know, if you see this going on, you know, like, what would you do? So, I mean, what do you remember of, uh, of opening yeah. your eyes? Yeah. That, um, well, I mean, we use that song as our opening song forever. Um, uh, so it, you know, it just had that vibe, you know, bouncy kind of vibe once it kicks in, you know. Um, but yeah, I mean, basically most of the songs that are on Break the Cycle are from real life experience, you know, or something people have come to us with, yeah. uh, um, with, you know, certain issues and the issues that were out at the time too, you know, I mean, they, we have our own issues right now, you know, with, okay. with, you know, how things are post COVID. Right. Uh, so a lot of people are going through, you know, some, some things and um, yeah, that's, that's how that one was really written. I mean, it's a little hardcore, but uh, you, know, you know, like the, the part you just mentioned there, Josh, um, so yeah, that that was that. And uh, musically speaking, um, we just always, you know, we would start with the music, and and Aaron would come in vocally, put laid down, you know, put down some tracks or some ideas that he had, and uh, then we'd kind of mold it from there too. So, um, so it involved all of us, all four of us, you know, coming up with the uh, it was you know. Mostly the three of us on the music and Aaron with with the lyrics and the melodies. On that, pretty much on most of that record. What so. was kind of the, what was kind of the attitude going into this record? You know, like usually a second band, a band's second record is kind of like, you know, like the first record was all the stuff they demoed and played and whatnot, and then a lot of times what I consider bands like vulgar display of power. Uh, you know, oh, their yeah. second record is usually a lot angrier, or you know, it's kind of like now we're dealing with the music industry. So now we're putting out this kind of record. Well, what was kind of the attitude going into it? You know, you guys have toured with Limp Bizkit, You guys did all the stuff. Like, were you guys yeah. super and ready to do this? Or were you guys in a very like kind of fuck you kind of mode? Or was it like, you know, like kind yes. of what, what was the vibe that was going on? The vibe was pretty much the same on the first record. We were still kind of hungry and angry and uh, just, we wanted to, I don't know. We were just at that point in our life. You know what I mean? And, uh, you know, as soon as you put out it's outside and it's been a while, that kind of goes away a little bit. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, a You're lot like, oh, of this that. isn't so bad. Yeah, well, Epiphany's <laughs> on there, too. So um, so there are some ballad-type songs on that record, on sure. Rick Cycle. Um, but, yeah, we were still – we still had that angry kind of um, vibe, at least on stage especially. Yeah. Um, and you know things started to lighten up a little bit more as as you know those those type of songs i'm talking about it's been a while outside right Epif- epiphany um uh, yeah those songs were um kind of lightened lighten <laughs> things up a little lighten the mood up a little yeah bit, so, right yeah so uh but you know i mean we always still wanted to play the heaviest stuff that we could and it just came to the point where we had to play those songs every right. night you know so well, that yeah. kind of leads into the next track, which is pressure. And uh, the one thing I was kind of getting from it, I don't know if, if how, how, how much you dove into the lyrics back then or with Aaron and whatnot, <clears throat> but I mean, pressure kind of seems obviously second album, a lot of pressure on you guys to right, put, right. Out, put out a hit. You know. Man, well, you guys could have interviewed each other, man. <laughs> 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 no, um, pressure was, uh, actually pressure was one of those songs that um, we had turned the record in. And they still wanted us to write a few more songs for it. 
and pressure was one of those songs so it's done in a in a different studio and wow. yeah the whole thing so we um that was one of them i'm trying to think of what the other two two were i think one of them actually might have been open your eyes as well too um but it's it was always a good thing and we always did that too we always went back in and tried to um you know put together some you know and a lot of times they would make the record. That's the crazy part is like, we'd go in, we'd be like kind of pissed. Like, Oh, you don't have the hit. You don't have the song that you're looking for. You know, we're saying to management and the label. Right. And, uh, <clears throat> and they were right. You know, I was like, we, we just went back in and, and, uh, that, that pressure came out. That was one of them, you know? So, but yeah, I mean, you, you described that perfectly with, uh, the lyrical content and all that, but yeah, sure. Uh, I mean, those are all, real, like I said, real life uh, situations. Was was there something in the band that that you a lot of the a lot of the tracks on here are very heavy opening riff, you know, intro, and then it would kind of lighten for the, you know, for the verse, and then a heavy chorus. Like, were you guys kind of fighting, wanting to be heavier, but still trying to be melodic for Aaron's vocal style and stuff like that too? Yes, actually, yes. Um, we weren't really trying. It just kind of came out that way. Um, <laughs> I know every band's going to say the same thing, but, <laughs> um, you know, Aaron can do both. He can sing, and and he can be real heavy with his voice, too. He's got that scream to him as oh, well. Yeah. Actually, the guy can rap, too, believe it or not. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah, th- you know, most of the songs are like that, and... You know, the other thing is we didn't want to keep writing the same record over and over again. And I know a lot of the same sound is always the same. Um, But I think the content of the songs and the musical direction of the song songs, we always wanted it to to have an edge to it, Um, which, you know, a lot of people are drawn to the the more radio friendly type that the majority of people are drawn to those songs. Um, but we, we wanted to try to keep it as heavy, but melodic too yeah. as well. Right. Yeah. So you, you were talking about, you know, the crowds being into the, into the band and into the, 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 the lighter stuff. And, you know, obviously, you know, you left, left the band many years ago, but I, I saw them a couple of years ago, headline louder than life. Mm-hmm. And I was kind of taken aback. I was like, "Stain really this big?" And then going to you know going out from the media and watching the crowd, I was just like, "Wow!" I mean, like, like even the 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 slower songs and everybody was just like you know singing and crying and everything else. And it was it was crazy to watch. Yeah, it was like that when I was there too. I mean, it, uh, just fans like at meet and greets and stuff like that. Um, you don't realize you've helped so many people through certain parts of their life until the say it you know yeah. so they come up to you and and say it in those situations or you know kids get tattoos i'm like dude what are you doing don't put a stain <laughs> tattoo on you man <laughs> right. you know so i mean i only got one it's not even the logo so um but yeah you know you just see those people they're really passionate about it and you know without without the fans obviously every band knows right. this i mean right. dude, you, can't, you can't do what you do without them so um, For sure. And I mean, yeah. just like I was saying, like just the, the, the lyrical content and everything, it's so, it's so deep on so many of these, on all of these songs, really, um, that it's like, it, yeah, I can imagine, like, I mean, I was 26 when this record came out, you know, mm. but I think about like when I had street teamers who were 14, 15. Where's the street teamers? <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. You know? But like my street teamers, you know, like they, you know, this is, this is what, this is what they were living, you know? So it's like to imagine them as, you know, 30, 40 years old, 40 year old people now, yeah. you know, listening to this. I can see that, you know, I could see how this record really helped them get through a lot of really tough stuff. Yeah, sure. Definitely. I mean, the stuff I grew up with, I still listen to this day, you know? Right. So, or any type of record that's had an impact on me like that. I mean, I still listen to all that stuff too. I don't care how old I am, but I'm a rocker <laughs> too. So, right, right. You know? Yeah. All right, man. Uh, next up on the album is a uh, fade, which was the third single. Um, and this is, this will be the first one with the video and everything else, man. Um, what, what do you recall from even just, you know, making the videos at the time and, and, and all that fun stuff. Yeah. That video was uh, super expensive. Um, <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, it was. It was really expensive. And the thing was, is it was right around 9-11. Mm-hmm. So the clock tower that's around us crumbled down. So it, it got very little play at MTV because oh, wow. they were cut. Yeah, they were yeah. cut. They were cutting all that stuff out. Yeah. Anything crumbling down, especially Bowling buildings. Down. Yeah, yeah. So we're we're kind of like, so we were kind of like a little disappointed in that. And um, at, at the MTV Awards, they wanted us to play. It's been a while. But we played. We ended up playing Fade. We just did what we wanted to do. I mean, I don't know if we pissed anyone off, but I don't think we got invited back. So <laughs> I think somebody might not have been happy about that. Yeah, someone. Yeah, I'm sure that that was the case. But uh, there was a time MTV was was real uh, kind to us, and we did the unplug thing with them and all that. But yeah, that video was. Uh, it took forever, man. It was like a three day shoot. Wow. Yeah. I was like for sure the longest, um, but it was um, yeah, it was kind of a bummer that it didn't get more more play than it did. I mean, the song did well, but yeah. you know the video didn't. Right. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, when you're missing that visual connection to the song too, it's like it doesn't it doesn't end up reinforcing it, you know, the way it should. Correct. So, yes. That's super unfortunate. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right, man. Well, Go ahead. I was, no, I was going to say the same thing. It's like the, the the lyrics, just like kind of like kids who are ignored. A kid, you know, like all of that. It's just and it, and it shows that in the video too. Yeah, yeah. So it kind of it, you can relate that to the video, which kind of sucked that they couldn't play it. But right. I mean, through his lyrics, yeah, you're right. I mean, yeah. it's it's pretty. It's pretty, the whole album's pretty deep as yeah, far as that goes. Super, yeah, super yeah, yeah. This was one where you're watching the video and and. and analyzing it and you're seeing him you know listening to the lyrics and obviously seeing an adult version of the guy and then him thinking back to his childhood and you know i'm in my 40s now and you're like that still hits home you're like yeah you know thinking back to like something my mom would have said or my dad would have said you know it's crazy how that stuff sticks with you and now being a parent and you you have to almost like worry about saying the wrong thing because you know what what you might forget about later today they're going to remember for the rest of their lives this and, and you know yeah, like right. these passing comments either good positive or negative you know so it's it's a tough one man so yeah watching that video today it just really hit home yeah and i i have a, a son too and he's just about to be a teenager i'm like oh so old, man. <laughs> good, so good, good, good luck <laughs> i know i know thanks thanks but um yeah it's the same thing too with with my son um you know he's in a different spot as you guys you know who or anyone who has kids know i mean different time mm-hmm. that when we grew up as opposed right. to what's going on now so you're right you don't know what to say sometimes you know so. it's, it's it's crazy like and you know the things that i have to deal with with my son was you know something he posted on snapchat you know got him in trouble at school or right. vape oh my pin, god dude. you know you're, like vape pens and things like you know what i'm saying like yeah. things that you would never think about i know, you, know right? you have to worry about you know things being construed as cyberbullying and things like that or i i had the um i had the principal of the school call me and he had he had posted as a joke and i i, I believe that it was a joke but he had posted um, the word smash over a person. And so I had the principal of the high school call me and said, and actually you have to, and I know what smash means, but he goes, and, and, and according to the urban dictionary, this means, and he read me the definition and I'm like, I can't, like I almost couldn't like, keep a straight face. I was just like, talking, sir. <laughs> just like, it's, it's, like, it's, I know those things, they sound stupid, but <laughs> they could be harmful to other yeah. people. Yeah. Yeah, and you know what? It's funny you say that, Josh, because the same uh, similar situation happened to me with my son too. Yeah. So, yeah, you get caught up in that that world. And I told him, I'm like, look, you don't know what road you're going down. Yeah, you right. Know? And it could lead to a real dark place. And I really didn't. I didn't use the word dark place. I can't remember what word I used, but just the wrong place. You know, yeah. right. But yeah, I definitely have to have to have those talks with like, I, I was like, I know you meant it as a joke and I know, but I'm like, what if one day you want to be president or if you want, I'm like, people are going to dig this stuff up and, you know, you have to worry about what you're putting out there. I yes, think that's that is. one of those things that consequence is one of the things that kids uh, like I have a stepson, you know, like consequence is one of those things they just don't think about, 
you know they're just like oh cool like i just put smash over a person like whatever and it's like <laughs> to, to me th- to me that means nothing I mean, yeah. right exactly you know, whatever but to someone else it could be right. harmful people are really really sensitive right now and yeah right um you know Especially when you laugh at your own kids thing where it's like really <laughs> funny to us because we have like a darker sense of humor right like, oh, right that's funny. and everyone's just like that's horrible and you're like oh shit. <laughs> i know you, you almost feel like a bad parent for right me. <laughs> like, yeah, right like, like shit, I taught him that word. Well, I know, right? Am I, am I supposed to be laughing at this? Or? <laughs> yeah, right. You're like, you're grounded. <laughs> right. You're, Seriously. I know, right? Oh, my God. That's funny. <laughs> All right, man. Well, let's dive into it, man. Uh, it's been a while. Uh, well, first, first single off the record, yeah. and, mm-hmm. and and you guys, uh, you guys successfully jacked a saying like people in their 30s and 40s right now can't say it's been a while without right. singing it or humming it, or right. you know, like, that's kind of like, own the word. You guys kind of own the phrase now, <laughs> yeah. I guess it's kind of turned into that. It's uh, we when we were on tour, we couldn't say it within the band, or we'd have to like <laughs> pony up 10 bucks, or right? Like it's that. like a yeah. swear jar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was like don't even say it's been a while. Like, That's awesome. Pick something else. So, um, I catch yourself. You'd be like, it's been. I'm yeah, like, <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. Yeah, you just got to try and change it up a little bit. It's uh, it's that turned out to a gr- into a great song. So, and it's been uh, a large part of our success, and we're real proud of that one, of course. But um, you know, uh, it's the same thing, man. It's it's one of those like. Uh, Part of life things, you know right. what I mean? I guess you could say. Um, but, you know, uh, that's a big one. <laughs> right. There's a lot to say about that song. I don't even know what direction to go on that one. But, uh, you know. Well, uh, I, I did want to kind of talk about the, the TRL aspect of it, because mm. obviously kind of the new metal thing for us and, and for, for everybody around us, you know, like that was the height of, like stained and corn and limp biscuit all being on the same charts as backstreet boys and in sync and Christina Aguilera and stuff. I mean, it was, it was crazy getting home from school and, you know, or waking up from a hangover or whatever, watching <laughs> TRL, TRL. I'm trying to think about what, what ages I was or that, but, uh, and I just know, seeing, right. you know, like, like it was lockstep, you know, day to day with all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Don't let's not forget about, uh, three doors down, uh, Nickelback and, go. uh, right. Creed Creed too <laughs> was another one. They were big tier all band. Um, yeah, man, the MTV was so they, they helped all of us like kind of, um, they, they pushed that whole new metal thing. And I know corn is definitely, uh, the Kings, you know, the Kings, as far as bring, you know, yeah. that label, you know, that label that people use, which is fine with me. I, it used to bother me. It doesn't bother me anymore. You know, well, that, that's always my question too, when it comes to, to band members from, especially from, from bands that back then is like, you know, what, what was considered new metal to you? You know, like when somebody's like, Oh, stained is new metal. Would you be like, why? <laughs> or did you ever see like, Oh, okay. Yeah. I guess we fit in this and this and this and this. You well, know? you know, I don't know. Was Lincoln park new metal. Well, that's kind of it. Yeah, I mean, you know, for a lot of people, yeah, it's kind of lumped into that new metal world. It is, it you is. Know? But like, you know, I mean, I think it used to piss off a lot of us actually. <laughs> and uh, oh yeah, because I've had conversations with other bands, and they're like, "That's ah, new metal, new metal label." I'm like, I know, and he's, we used to get so up in arms about it. And now you think about it, like, man, that was just stupid. Who cares? Whatever. It's just <laughs> is if you can put it in a category uh, like that, that's fine. I mean you know the grunge had their thing right. like you know was nirvana really they didn't start grunge i mean right but but they're most noted for it you know um but <clears throat> yeah i mean we came up in that time where that new metal thing was was going on and we were right along for the ride so whatever it is what right. it is for sure yep uh, you know, Fred filmed this video and obviously Fred Durst had a lot of, uh, you, know, you know, ties with Stained and things like that. So, he so did. how heavily involved was Fred with, you know, not only Break the Cycle, but the videos and, and everything that kind of, how, how involved with Stained at that time was Fred, uh, you know, at the time? At that point, not, um, you know, he, he definitely was kind of, you know, I mean, he still had to put his time into Limp Biscuit too. So yeah. between that and then he was, he had his hands in a lot of different things. 
So Break the Cycle is pretty much just us. Um, where as opposed to like on the first one, Dysfunction, he he was he was a real integral part in uh, um, being there with us and right. kind of getting in the powwow and you know what I mean. Like he was, you know, we we thought you know he had a lot to do, a lot more to do with that one. Nice. So yeah, the videos. Yeah, he did a, he did a bunch of videos on Break the Cycle though. I mean, I, from what I can remember, it's been a while. Uh, he did uh, Epiphany. And he did, um, well, there's another one he did on there, too. I just had it to tip my tongue. I forgot. But uh, I think he did, like, three or four videos on that one. So, yeah. I think that's, he was kind of leaning more towards that artsy side of things. <laughs> yeah. A <laughs> uh, quick one on this one, too. I mean, when, when did you notice that this song was kind of taking over you know, rock radio and, and everybody, you know, kind of, did you pull up at stop signs and hear people playing it in other cars and you mean when, kind of stuff? You mean, when was it annoying? <laughs> <laughs> For lack of a better way to put it. Yeah, sure. Yes, exactly. No, that when is did a good way annoying? to put it. Let's see, but it was more annoying to, to the people that listen to the radio. We were like busy working. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, when we'd come home for a little break or something like that, yeah, it would just be like, Next channel, next channel, <laughs> whatever. I mean, this is the last thing I wanted to hear, you know? Right. I mean, you, you appreciate the fact that um, there was a lot of love shown for the song. And, um, you know, that was the one that really put us on the map. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, so, <clears throat> but I think for us personally, we just played it so much and we just didn't want it. You know, it's like, you know, playing your own music that you play every night. It's like, you don't want to hear that when you're at home. Right. Yeah. So. Did you feel like that song like that's, sort of defined you guys like to the industry and to people or was it kind of just like, no, that's just one of the things and we're, we're so much more than that. Or did, you know, like kind of like what was the attitude around, around you guys at that time too? The like, attitude. Yes. Men kind of thing. Like, no, this, everything you do is wonderful. You know, like that kind of thing or. Well, the attitude definitely was, is like, yeah, we, we were fully aware that that song is the th what put us out there, but we were also like, Hey, don't forget, we, we can still do this too. You know, right. I mean, this is not all we got. This is not our whole bag. You know, I mean, we could write those songs all day, but what's the point? That's not really what we wanted to do. Um, we, you know, we had so far away after that, we had right here, we had songs that were on different albums, but, um, you know, um, it was, you know, off of the strength of that song, that right. those, those were, that those songs were successful too. So we, we were very aware that, um, you know, that was just a part of who we were, you know? Um, but we also had another side as well too. Right. For sure. Cause it's yeah. like, you know, labels are always trying to like, once they get that hit song, they're like, great, nine more of those. <laughs> Dude, that's exactly, Keep them coming. You know what? Yeah. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, yeah that, that's why I'm always curious about that. Like, you know, did you guys, you know, because some bands they can hit get that hit song, but still be like, hey, cool. No, we're still we're still doing this. You yeah. know, but like the labels and management are usually just like, no, no, no. How do you write nine more of those so we can have that much? Blah. You know, like so. I don't. I know, and and the thing is, is you can write nine more of those songs, but I mean, do you want really want to keep hearing the same song over right. and over that again? Becomes, right, that becomes so, a good question. And, yeah, and you know, I mean, we do have a couple more of those songs, but um, which they they were a, such a different approach than it's been right. a while was. Yeah. So, all right, man. Up next on the record is change. Change. Okay. I got a nice little, uh, nice little bait and switch on the, uh, you know, like it's super heavy, like right out the gate, and then it goes right into kind of a, a mellow thing there. But I mean, and the other note I have is, you know, great drum, great drum groove in the verses, man. Um, oh, thanks. I, I will, I will ask you this, and we'll just kind of go off this. But like, when it comes to writing drums for Stained, I mean, you could easily have just been like, you know four on the floor just kind of grooving man but you do a lot of you're doing a lot of stuff you know kind of under underneath everybody i i seriously thought i was gonna get shut down on all that stuff like right out of the gate <laughs> i was like right uh, yeah and i would play like all this stuff like to the point where i'm like man that's just too busy you know i mean so i did cut out some of it but no one ever said anything to me at the right. time because it just kind of added 
I tried to fill in spots where they were necessary or appropriate or they yeah. fit. You know what I mean? Um, I don't know. I guess that was just part of my style and what I grew up listening to as well, too. So where would that have come from? You know, growing up listening to us. Oh, uh, Stuart Copeland. Okay. Um, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can hear that with all the splash symbols. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, yeah. Um, yeah that that's him. And I, I liked a lot of funk drummers too. Jeff Picaro. Um, and then of course the King John Bonham, you know, yeah. so um uh, those are those are the kings you know i mean danny carey wasn't you know he wasn't tool was tool at the time but yeah i mean he's he's pretty much the king right now as far as right. rock and roll goes and yeah yeah i mean that that song definitely has a very tool-esque kind yep. of atmosphere to it even even well, Aaron, vocals like yeah. when i first heard it i was like wow he's really channeling maynard on this one <laughs> yeah 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 you're right you know what well, uh we were big fans of them too. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. And you can you can hear Alice in Chains in a lot of our songs. Oh, yeah, you sure. can hear, you know, uh, uh, those are all the bands that we really liked a lot. Yeah. So there was there was a few songs where I, I kind of was like taking some notes and I'm like, I could picture this being on Sap. I could picture this being on Jar Fries, you know, like <laughs> oh, for it's sure, just, yeah. you know, but I mean, but not in a like, you know, not in a copying kind of way, but just like in that it just fills that kind of has that you, same feel to it, which is yes, really you're right. No, you're right. You're totally right. It, it, uh, yeah, you can feel just the vibe of it. You know yeah. what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I'm like, I agree. like waste and whatnot. Yeah, waste. Like for me, it was like not that I want to get ahead of ourselves, but like when I heard that, I was like, I was like, wow, this sounds. It yeah, could, it could. It's that potent. You know? Yeah, you know? that had that Allison Chains vibe to it for yeah. sure. Yeah, yeah. All right, man. Uh, up next is uh, can't believe. Oh, got a, that's it. Yeah. Got a, got a nice drum intro. I think this I might just, be the I first drum intro. On on that too. It's not I do. Really often that you get to hear a song that kind of kicks in with the cymbals and everything like that. You know, like yeah. in the beginning, like that, that was, that totally took me aback a little bit. I was like, whoa, that's fucking, that's way interesting. Yeah. I, I can't remember exactly how that whole song kind of formed, but uh, I think I was probably playing that drum beat at first and then it kind of just, filled in around that but uh actually i just heard that song on xm the other day i'm like whoa there's one you don't ever hear <laughs> so um um yeah that was that 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 one's heavy that's yeah i was gonna yeah. say that's one of the few that aaron really lets go on oh in, yeah in, in that song so i mean what was was there a vibe around that like was it a you know Fuck this! Was, I want to fucking let's yeah. do a heavy song fuck this i want to i'm sick of shit yeah that's exactly what it was yeah yeah Definitely, because I mean, it's it's on a record. I mean, that's probably the heaviest song on the record. I was, yeah, sure. you know what I mean. Um, so yeah, that that was kind of just like a f you, you know, <laughs> type <Right>. of moment. <laughs> yeah. You know? right. So, I mean, we did sometimes. You know, some songs didn't make it to the records too. So uh, we would, you know, we'd have to shelf them, you know. But right. we were like, no, that one's got to stay. Almost yeah, well, it's, it's funny because in the in the realm of just listening to it in that order, you know, yeah. it's like when I got to that song, I was just like, "Oh, this sounds like they're angry." <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. This, is, this is this is like if I have to get one more call from the label or management <laughs> telling me we need another single, like kind of that's, thing. Yeah, you know, or you're just like, you know what? Fuck that. We're doing this song. That's probably exactly what happened too. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, it was so long ago, but that's probably exactly what happened. Yeah, I said that I wrote down that this almost has like an old school Deftones feel to it, you know, just oh, kind of yeah. the it's just Aaron going crazy and kind of yeah. kind of channeling like an inner Chino or something. Yeah, uh, I, another that, band that's a great we were, comparison. Yeah, another band we were big fans of too, Deftones for sure. So Deftones, Corn, I mean, we loved all those guys, so. right? Um, yeah, it's hard to not have that somehow get absorbed, bounce off, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah, yeah, I mean, shades of it come out. I mean, you guys know. Same thing, you know. So it's uh, it's bound to happen. Absolutely. All right. Next up is uh, Epiphany, which would be the fifth single on the album. And uh, actually, I was watching the video right before we started. Man, is that Billy Zane in the that's, video? I'm like, Jesus that's, Christ, man! Like, that's, that's Billy Zane. Yes, that's crazy, yeah. man. I, I was yeah. like, is this from like a movie soundtrack? And I was like, looking at it, and I'm like, no, this is just the video. Yeah, no tight no, no like that. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, he was gracious enough to uh do the video. Fred probably coerced him into doing it too. But I was gonna ask, was it something he wanted to be a part of, or was it just like, ah, oh, no, let's just get at, at first? It was supposed to be uh Thora Bush, 
I don't know if you know, or Birch, whatever her last name. Oh, yeah, yeah. Or Birch. Yeah, yeah. Uh, It was supposed to be her, and she had some movie obligation or something like that. So Billy Zane did it, and I I thought he did a great job. This is the thing about the video, too. Like, you see these these images in the back. They're all blurred out. It's me, Johnny, and Mike. Yeah, yeah. We flew all the way out to L.A. I'm like, dude, you guys could (laughs) have used cardboard cutouts. Like. No, it has I mean, to be your shadow, John. Uh, right, it has to be my shadow. Or or <laughs> Johnny's, yeah, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> I just that's what I remember about that. I was spending three days in LA on our break, and uh, right, <laughs> like it, it, you guys could use Carver cutouts, like I said, you know, right? You really didn't need us. Like, just get some of the crew, and they could have just done whatever. <laughs> Anyone, really, yeah. <laughs> Grab three guys walking down the street. Come here with me. Yeah, right. <laughs> the, uh, <laughs> Uh, were you around Billy Zane at all? Did you actually, you know, meet him or ever talk to him? Yeah, uh, he was busy. I mean, I didn't yeah. want to bother or anyone, but yeah, you, yeah, you didn't ask so. him about like Back to the Future or anything <laughs> <laughs> or Titanic, right? Yeah. Yeah. Titanic. yeah, no, nothing like that. All right. Uh, how how did you did you enjoy ma- the process of making videos or or did you like watching the videos later on? I mean, or are you or are you just like, oh, this is just something we have to do? Um. That depends. Okay. Cause like there, we worked with Nigel Dick and he had done a bunch of videos. He was real easy to work with cause he was quick. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And he would get the shots. It was the guys that were like repetitive, repetitive, repetitive. And I can understand when you're doing the music to be that way. Yeah. But to shoot a video scene, that's going to be like a clip for like a half a second. Right. You know what I mean? To sit there for an hour and a half to, to or maybe longer sometimes to do that i mean it gets it, it gets to be a little much after a yeah. while yeah i've been so. in my fair share of music videos where it's like okay audience take <laughs> in and you're like i have no more energy for this <laughs> <laughs> you know like why wasn't the first four takes okay like right like, right exactly. well, yeah. now that's different <laughs> that yeah. was the march yeah. shovel video oh my god oh, those, really? those poor kids yeah and oh, it was yeah. like the all day long yeah. all day long that video yeah and I know we've talked a lot about the Epiphany video, but this song itself, probably one of my favorite tracks on the record. Mm, yeah. um, and and reading comments under the video, man, like I, it, that's the one thing when you when you're in a band like this, people are just uploading their past trauma onto you all the time. And like every video or every comment on the video was, you know, this song means a lot to me because my husband passed away 16 years ago and, you know, just, just all that stuff. Just, just, and I'm, I'm assuming, you know, when you're out touring and out just probably at the grocery store, people are like, man, <laughs> you know, just, just telling you all about their stuff. Right. And it's got, it's got to be tough to kind of live that life. It's even worse when you hear it at the grocery store. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, really. Like, oh, yeah, just everybody singing at yeah, you. Yeah. Like, dude, I just want some fucking milk, man. I know. Alone. Well, they don't recognize me anymore because I didn't know this beard. So. Right. right. <laughs> but, uh, <clears throat> no, I mean, it's it's a compliment, obviously, that people, um, you know, really dug into the to our stuff like that. Um, you know, it's almost like a, reading one of those self-help books, you know, kind of things. And, uh I, if it helps someone in some way, that's that's the best. I yeah. mean, you know, so we're pretty proud of that. Yeah, I mean, that's that's got. I mean, dude, I I always wonder about this because it's like you know, when it comes to the lyrical content, obviously Aaron was the one who was the main lyricist. But yep. it's like, you know, when they come up to you and they're like, "Let me tell you about my life," and then kind of like, "What do you think I should do?" <laughs> I, yeah, uh, <laughs> I'm, like, I, I'm not a counselor, right? Right. It's <laughs> like, a one eight hundred number. I, I guess, can tell. You know. I can tell you what not to do. <laughs> yeah, <right. laughs> but uh, no, I know Aaron. Aaron used to get it a lot, and he he was pretty gracious about dealing with all that stuff. Right, because um, especially when he, you have a big song like like outside or yeah, you know, Epiphany. It's like, you know, just those amount of kids who come in and with with all of those stories and kind of like, this guy wrote the song or he's in the band that sang the song or whatever. Like right. maybe he can help me. You know, yeah, like, yeah not the drummer though. <laughs> Somebody put me to the guitar player. Yeah, I know. Right? Yeah. 
Hey, do you know where Aaron Lewis is? Can I? Yeah. Where can we find him? I don't. I don't need you. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's in therapy. Go talk to him, not me. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be over here at the catering. Be, yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. All right, man. Uh, up next is uh, Suffer. Suffer. Oh, yeah. Okay. That one's got that slow kind of, uh, you know, groove to it. Yeah. God, boom. Yeah. Um, I don't have enough to think about them now because. Uh, but that one, that's kind of got that Alice in Chainsy vibe to it as yeah, well. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. Um, yeah, man. Uh, I love how it opens up into that chorus section. Yeah. Um, you know, it kind of goes from that drudgy, like I said, like kind of Alice in Chains vibe. But then, it, then I come to find, you know, that part, mm -hmm. you know. So, I mean, I, I used to dig that song a lot. I still do. <laughs> yeah, it's Really, really good track. Yeah, it's definitely yeah. got that real good, that slow Alice, like you said, that slow Alice and Grooves kind of, Alice and Chains groove. Yeah. That just really just carries that whole song. It does, yeah. 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 When, he, when he came to like writing these tracks back back then, was this a everybody in the, get in the room and just hash it out, you yep. know, re recording on cassettes and everything else, you know, listening to it in the car and, That's exactly and all that good stuff? Did. Yeah, Yeah, we'd have like take home uh, CDs and stuff like that. And, uh, yeah, and just trying different things and, you know, oh, that part, that sucks. Let's shelf that part and let's try something different here. Like mm -hmm. that kind of, yeah, I mean, it's like, I'd, I would assume a lot of bands who write together probably do the same exact thing. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it it kind of seems like with, with how heavy this record can be, and then obviously it mellows out like we've, we've talked about, but I just feel like you guys are like, let's just do more of this, you know, <laughs> let's keep yeah. doing this. And, and, yeah. you know, like we said earlier, like record companies are like, Hey guys, uh, can you, can you mellow it down every once in a while at least? <laughs> yeah. 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 And we, and I, that's a perfect example of break the cycle. That's exactly what it is. Did you, with this record, especially, you know, coming off of dysfunction and, and with all these, you know, with all the singles that you guys had, mm -hmm. were there any like record company or management like requests that you guys were just like, fuck no. Like, you know, we need you guys to dress up like clowns or fucking, you know. No, no, no. We were pretty, we were pretty firm on all that stuff. We kind of, um, we, we weren't afraid to tell them, no, we're not going to do that. We're not going to do this. We're not going to do that. Whatever. Right. Um, the, you know, but the, at the end of like a rec you know, when we thought we had the whole record done, they were, they always wanted us to go and write two or three more songs. And um, it turned out to be a good thing, actually. Right. So, uh, other than that, you know, they were there for support, but they weren't, they weren't pushy about it. They, oh, that's cool. Yeah. They, they knew that we kind of just, what we were doing was, was pretty good. And, you know, they ran with it, so we were pretty lucky in that sense. Awesome. Yeah. Right, next up is a uh, warm, safe place. Oh, that's yeah. all. Uh, that's all, Aaron, right there. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, <clears throat> same thing. Um, just heartfelt. Um, you know, the cool thing about Aaron too is that he put a lot of things almost. He left them kind of third person, so they're open for you to kind of piece it into your own life yeah. right you know what i mean and uh, that's one of those for sure and i'm sure the waste is after that if i i believe and that couple, that, couple more for that one yeah, yeah oh, okay yeah so yeah it's, that, it's actually so. you said that was because uh, my note is uh is this song vague or did you know the person he's singing about because well uh the other song I just mentioned, okay. uh, yes, yes, that, that, that's actually a true story, but <clears throat> for the most part, you know, he kept things pretty much open for interpretation for anyone to piece it into their life. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, when I was reading the lyrics to Safe Place, I, I, my, my note says, was this about touring? <laughs> that's what yeah. I got too. Yeah. yeah. Like it had that, it had that kind of vibe, almost the uh, home, yeah. home, you know, kind of. <laughs> Not so much. Yeah. <laughs> as far as the touring part goes. Yeah. That's what I got out of it. But that's yeah. it. What was that, bro? Come on. Sorry, man. sorry. <laughs> Is that your wife uh, somehow coming yeah, into the podcast, right. you know, 100 miles away? He's calling, <laughs> He's calling in from 800 miles away. <laughs> She's reliable like that. They'll find uh, you. Uh, no, she will. <laughs> 
<laughs> Next up on the album, man, is uh, "For You," which was the fourth oh. single off the record. So, uh, okay. man, this this might be my one of my favorite tracks on the record too. I love this tra- this track. It, it's probably mine too. Yeah. Um, yeah, that one. Uh, I think I just started out with that drum beat, and we just and then Mike ran with that guitar riff, and and just like that's that's from what I remember uh had happened with that one but that one that's got a lot of energy to it the video is stupid <laughs> i don't know if you ever saw it but it's it, it's uh yeah so but i mean yeah that song has all the elements of um just a, a good song you know it's got a lot of energy to it so yeah, i love super, playing super i love deep. playing it you know yeah super deep yes that's for sure like i said especially for those kids back i mean and that's kind of it man like a lot <laughs> like all these songs on this record it's like i could easily see kids listening to this now and being yeah. like yes that's exactly how i feel yes that's exactly how it's like this yeah. this record i mean n- not to get too uh hyper hyperbolic but it's like it's it really is kind of like a timeless record you know mm-hmm. it's like there's you know like you're you guys as kids can be listening to this you know like I could see kids in, you know, whatever the eighties listening to this and being like, fuck yeah. Like nineties, 2000, like even, you know, 20 years from now looking at this and just still being able to relate to all of these lyrics. My kids still just getting into the fact that I'm actually in the band. So, <laughs> <laughs> or it was in the band rather, but it would be, it would be, it would be a trip though. If, if somebody like played him, you know, a, a song like this or outside or something and him just being like, fuck, this song's crazy. And then like finding out his dad was the drummer. Of the song, I know. And, you yeah. know, how much, how much of that connect things, you know? Yeah. Like I said, he's still kind of, he's, he's just falling into that. Like right now he's a late right. bloomer as far as that goes. I don't think he cared. I mean, when he was a little baby, he'd come and watch us with the right. muffs on and stuff, yeah, right. you know? So. Yeah. The, yeah. Actually I pulled up the video. I watched this one. Yeah. It, it is pretty rough. <laughs> it's rough dude. That, was, that was, that was us being lazy. Did not want to like go out to LA to shoot a video or they're like, Oh, we'll come to you. We're like, no man, we need a break. Like, right. break. Can we just do like animation or something, or, or like take <laughs> live <laughs> footage or something. Yeah, you know? yeah. Just pull from a live show we did. Yeah, something. But, yeah, I talked. Uh, it's rough. I you're talking about that. you know you're talking about like you know Mike you know kind of kind of uh, riffing with you and you know you're playing a drum beat. He kind of comes in over him. Um, <clears throat> you know I've interviewed Mike a couple of times in the past, and the one mm-hmm. thing I always, which is crazy about him, is how incredible of a guitar player he is. Oh, and yeah, I, I remember when he got uh, the one thing I talked to him about was when he got named to be in the Newstead band. I was like, why, you know, why Mike? And then all of a sudden he's shredding, you know, Metallica solos. Yeah. And I'm like, where was this guy this whole time? And he was like, yeah, that's just something we never did. But he was like a, you know, a, a guitar shredder in the, you know, in the 90s or whatever. And just kind of kept it hidden, I guess, from everybody. Yeah. Back in the day where, well, where we came from, he, you know, both of us were in separate bands and whatever. Yeah. We both had guitar shredders, like, you know, for guitar players, both mm-hmm. Mike, you know, being in his band and me being in my band, my guitar player was the same way. But uh, yeah, he, he has that too. And he didn't really start doing solos until man, it was like chapter five or something like that. Right. Yeah. So it was further down the line, but he, he sure as hell can do them. That's for sure. Yeah. Yep. All right. Next up is uh, "Outside," which was the second single on the record, man. And uh, it's, a, <laughs> it's a hit. Yeah, <laughs> it's a hit. "Outside" was one of those songs. Like I was telling you guys earlier, it just uh, it was something that just happened, you know. And it happened at a time when it was not at first a stain song, but we turned it into a stain song. Right. So. Um, I think the rest is kind of history in that one really i mean the the video was cool because actually that was our hometown oh nice oh that's cool. um yeah so and we had to play a show later that night too in our in our hometown so um it was kind of convenient to do uh do the video and plus it was just to have it done at home too that was that was kind of nice so it was Right, especially after, it's like, like you said, it's like you guys are doing all this stuff, and then it's like, all right, cool, fly to LA. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I know we got to do it. Why do we do this uh, in Massachusetts? You're like, oh, uh, yeah, LA flew to us, so it was good. yeah, all right, there you go. Right, yeah. 
when I when I first started touring back in the day, and and Worcester was on the Worcester. Uh, Worcester. was on the on the list. I I made the mistake of calling. I was like, "What's where's Worcester at?" <laughs> All right, so Fred, there's a song for there's a Limp Biscuit song. Uh, where he names all the towns and stuff like that, and it is, it's, 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 he says Worcester on it, and he oh, and nice. they kept and they kept it. No one ever corrected <laughs> him. Or so, yeah. just yeah. his people off. <laughs> yeah, probably he doesn't care. No. Nah. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. But yeah, that, uh, I, I think the nice thing about I mean, I guess outside for you guys because it was already a hit before you guys go in to do break the cycle or, or, or whatnot. And so it was kind of like money in the bank. You already knew it was going to be a, uh, uh, you know, success, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. We had a feeling it was going to be, I mean, with the new version, it's weird. Some people are like, oh, I like the first version. I'm like, okay, cool. I like whatever version you want. <laughs> right. That's kind of with me, you know, you like the song. Yeah. Right. Exactly. And it's just one of those nice things where the original is just, you know, as bare bones as you can get, you know, it's Aaron yep. and, and an acoustic and then Fred kind of, Hyping over it the entire time, and and yeah, but I mean, <laughs> but uh, but yeah, so it was, it's, it just kind of, you know, a good song is a good song kind of deal when you know, just get it down to those, just you know, an acoustic guitar and the vocalist, and and kind of go from there. Yeah, yep, that's pretty bare bones right there. Yeah, yep. All right, uh, and next up is uh, waste, waste, True more story. drama shows. <laughs> yes, more trying to... <laughs> <laughs> Yep, so... Uh, yep, that one is a true story, actually. Um, and the true story is, is all the lyrics that he sang in the song. And uh, that really did happen. It happened in... Uh, I think it was Detroit. If, if, I'm, if I'm not mistaken, I think it was Detroit. Well, now I'm going to have to dive back into those lyrics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but no, that is a true story. It's uh, it's kind of crazy. So it's it's sad, but it's true. I hate to quote Metallica, but right, you know. like <laughs> I'm sure they've said it's been a while plenty of times. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's true. Though. I mean, it's just like like we were saying before. It's like just about fans coming up to you and yeah, you know, unloading this kind of stuff on on top of you. You know, yeah. and you're just like, we just pulled into town, man. Like, can we just <laughs> get ourselves settled in before, you know, yeah. trying, to, trying to get to the Denny's before? <laughs> yeah, right. Trying to get to Denny's, yeah, right. Yeah, I need a, you know, moons over my hammy before I get into this stuff, man. This is heavy. Yeah. And then but, like, uh, right, it was Waffle House. <laughs> yeah, right. But I'm surprised that, like, you know, to be honest with you, that Aaron doesn't have more songs in a weird way like this because I'm sure people came up to him with just any number of horrifyingly terrible life stories, you know? Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I'm sure he, he still gets it to this day. Right. Yeah. Seriously. I, I do love the, well, fuck them and fuck her and fuck him and fuck you line. Yeah. <laughs> it's just like, like, damn, Aaron. There's a lot of fucks in there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There is. Well, that's where it's like, you know, shows the, the intense, part of the song, you know what I mean? Yeah. It builds into that real intense section right there. Yeah. Yeah. But it really does, man. It totally gives me that jar of flies sap yep. to it. It's yep. just it's got that that heavy it's like it's like a heaviness that's not heavy, but it still it weighs on you in a weird way, you know? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Totally got gotcha. And I think it totally nailed it on that one. Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Final track on the record is uh yeah. Take It. Take it. Uh, there's a hidden track on there. So, no, that was well, on the other one. I'm just <laughs> we don't we don't have any bonus tracks. <laughs> no, we don't. I know that was such a, that was so stupid. Why do we all do that, man? I don't know. <laughs> right. I think, I think Corn even started that too. Yeah, it's got the, oh, uh, the the crazy you know family fighting at the end of the record. Right. <laughs> it's like the whole forty minutes of blank empty space, and then like, oh, we'll throw in this track. I was always just like, just throw in the track. Yeah, <laughs> just put the track as another song. Yeah, well, it takes you forty minutes to get over Daddy before that too. You're like, Jesus right. Christ, man! It's like, it's, I know. It's shit on that record. <laughs> like, I gotta watch cartoons after I listen to that fucking shit. <laughs> I know, or something funny. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's kind of how waste is too, actually. Yeah, yeah. Um, it just has a really great crunchy riff to it, though, man. It's got such a I, I yeah. love the riff. I don't remember much about that last song. <laughs> I'll be honest with you. Yeah. 
My my only note is it has a super metal bridge. So that that was kind a of another super metal, <laughs> super metal bridge. Is that what yeah, said? like a super heavy man. It's, it's just that okay. where I keep talking about where you guys are like, we want to be this band, but we know this band or this this band is going to sell records. You know, it's kind of like a, a, a constant struggle in the band we're, of like we're fighting with ourselves. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. No, that's uh, that's a good point. That's a good point. Yeah. Well, that that was the thing with Stand. I mean, it was it was heavy, but melodic in a lot of the songs, yeah. and some some of the other ones are just you know it's just chill, melodic on you know on their own. Um, but yeah, that would be the best way to describe uh, that band is just it's you know heavy melodic kind of thing. I mean, yeah, I think you got, I think you guys really captured the emotional essence of that that era of that mm -hmm. real, you know, of that time period, you know, when you have a band like corn or limp biscuit that were, you know, uh, maybe a little bit more hip hop -y and, and, and a lot more screamier, you know, and then you have somebody like tool and whatnot. It's like, there's all these different kind of sort of lyrical styles that were going on around that time. But I feel like this, that like this record especially is yeah. really encapsulated that, 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 the fan vibe of that time period, you know, just that kind of isolated kid uh, yes. feeling. And I think that's it, it, you, like I said, this, this record really epitomized that. And yeah. I think, well, I think it's, that's what make it, that's what makes this such a classic. Well, thank you. Yeah, we did. We found, we found our niche. That's for sure. We, we kind of fit in with in somewhere in between all of that, you know? So we just rode the wave as long as we could, man. Yeah. Yeah. Congrats, man. This is this is a great record. It's Thank crazy you. that this album is has sold uh seven hundred and sixteen thousand copies in its first, first week. week. Yeah. <laughs> I was, I was like, Jesus. That was gold and a half on the first week. Just just yeah, right. Just one week. After one week, you're like, all right, where's my gold record? <laughs> yeah, no, we were we we're it's funny because we we're uh, me and Aaron were on a golf course and we got the phone call on the golf course and we we're like, What? We couldn't we couldn't yeah. I mean, yeah. we were not expecting that, you know, and then they're printing out, they're pumping out a whole bunch of new records to get them out into the market because they were just yeah. selling out. So that yeah, was a crazy time, man. It was a crazy time. It was, it was a good time. Um, and hopefully that time comes back again, yeah. you know, for a lot of bands, I, I, you know. It was just so different, you know. You're you're sitting there talking about street teams and stuff like that. Now all that people have to do is just go to Facebook, right? Like, right. Spotify, yeah. or whatever it is, right? There's, yeah, it's not right. So it, you know, it is a very bizarre time, you know. Like we're back, you know, back when we're growing up. It's like, all right, hey, you know, I would go and read metal maniacs or metal edge or hip parader or something you know at the store and you'd be able to read something about a cool band you're like all right i wonder what this band sounds like and then you had to go to the record store and find the record and like it was just such a process and right. now i'm like i text ro i'm like hey check out this band and then right. you're already you're already right. listening to it <laughs> right yeah yeah you know we're looking at an album's cover and just being like that looks cool i'll check it out you know right. are you referring your to like, there, you know are you referring to like uh the new the newer stuff that's out now yeah. Yeah. Well, that's that's one of the reasons that that we're doing this also is not only to kind of go back and really see what the you know what the vibe was and, and different perspectives about you know the early two thousands, but especially with the resurgence of it right now is yes. really seeing how you guys bands like Stained have influenced these bands that are doing this now because the bands that are doing it now that are becoming bigger were the 13, 14 year olds who were, you know, listening right. to this record and being like, holy shit, this guy, this band really understands me, you know? Yeah. So now to see them doing it, it's just, it really is. It's a, just a cool evolution of the whole situation. Yep. Absolutely. And, and the same thing happened before us too. I mean, right. all the bands that we were influenced by, you know, and then the bands before them, I mean, that's how it kind of yeah. should go really. I mean, that's how, that's naturally just how it goes. I think. Yeah. It's just kind of weird because like new metal was just considered such a like almost slur, you know, like for for so many years that it's like now it's kind of like the slur everybody gets to own again. It's, yeah. I'll tell you what though, all those new metal bands they're all headlining all the festivals right now. Yeah. So I mean, yeah. you know, at least the ones that are still you know doing it, right? Yeah. So I mean, everyone's doing you know they're still doing it. So good for them. Yeah, that's exactly yeah. it. Yeah. I wanted to ask you about one tour I saw you guys on. Uh, Corn, sick and twisted. 
Obviously, mm-hmm. it was you, you guys and corn. I but probably was, don't remember. Well, well, the, the, this will you this will remember is the fact that you know David hurts his wrist or whatnot, and Mike Borden comes in to fill in. Mm-hmm. And obviously, you know, I, I don't know if you're a huge Faith No More fan like I was, but just to mm-hmm. see Mike Borden playing corn songs and just uh, you know just to just to kind of see that dude around, I bet it had to have been fun. Uh, yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah, because I was a Faith No More fan too. Um, yeah, definitely. Uh, he didn't really fit the vibe of Corn, though. That was the no. only thing. And I, I, th- I thought <laughs> right. that he would, though. I really did. I thought that you know he would kind of adapt. But Mike was kind of set in his in his own and his what he liked, and that was yeah. that. You know. So I think you know both he and the band knew at the time that um, it wouldn't be a permanent thing. No. Yeah. Exactly. To answer your question, and and they they got they. Uh, Stumbled upon a, a friend of mine and a great drummer and Ray Luzier. Nice, yeah. yeah. So uh, I think he fits, and he's just an amazing player. So, so. Is that what? Uh, j- just kind of we'll, we'll we'll wrap up with uh, you know kind of what you're doing currently. But what kind of what brought you to Nashville? I grew up in Nashville. I don't live there now, but that's where I grew up there. Um, and, and it's crazy to me to see everybody just kind of <laughs> going to Nashville now that I I'm know. not there. Yeah, yeah. I, dude, there's too many people here now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm not even talking about the musicians. They can all stay. <laughs> I'm talking about the unwanted. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, have you been back here at all? Chuck? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm I'm just I'm up in Louisville, so yeah, I go back. Oh, okay. My yeah. and my dad still lives down there and stuff. So yeah, I go back all the time. It's crazy, right? I mean, yeah, uh, it, yeah I mean well, anyway, so to answer your question, <clears throat> so I, I was kind of in between LA as far as moving. You know, uh, my wife and I got divorced, blah, 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 the whole thing. Right. Anyway, uh, so it was either L.A. or Nashville. And so I started with L.A. I was out there for six, eight months, something like that. And it was just everything had changed so much out there. And I received a phone call from a friend of mine here. And he asked if I'd be interested in doing a, a project with him. And, you know, he sent me some stuff and I was like, yeah, cool, man. He's like, well, come out to Nashville. So I flew to Nashville for like a week or two, something like that. And I was like, yeah, this is every, cause everything was just right here. It's right yeah. here. LA is so spread out. And, uh, so yeah, I liked the vibe and whatever. I didn't, you know, um, you know, I, I know it's a big country town and like, that's what people yeah. relate Nashville to. Um, which, which it is, it is, it's, it's definitely, uh, more country heavy than it is rock heavy. Right. Uh, but there are good rock bands that, that are from here or at least, have, you know, maybe moved here and formed here like mine did my band. Yeah. Um, or there's, you know, we'll get good shows too. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Oh yeah. So there is a rock scene. It's just not, you know, it's not close to as big as what the country thing is, you know? So. Yeah. I was there for, for many a year, man. Um, yeah. talk to me, talk to me about Lydia's castle. Talk, tell me about that, man. Lydia's castle. So it's, uh, we're female fronted. <clears throat> it's, um, you know, if you listen to it, it's got some, it's got some shades of stain in there too. Okay. Um, but it's cause it's kind of like that. It's that, um, melodic heavy, kind of thing again you know i mean i don't maybe that's what i'm just drawn to <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I like to write heavy intros and soft verses what do i do <laughs> yeah i like to listen to pantera and i like to listen to i don't know whoever <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> no i don't listen to it but, no, no. Um, i gotta say their, their new single sounds pretty good yeah yep yeah. um uh so yeah i mean it's it's you have to listen to it. It's, it's, um, kind of one of those things you get, you get out of it, what you get out of it. You know, um, we have a five song EP right now and we have some other songs that are recorded where they're just not mixed. So we got to get them mixed and mastered, um, uh, for the next round of them. So we'll see how far it goes, man. You know? Mm-hmm. So but yeah, I, good stuff. I've, I've met Tanya a couple of times. She's a, she seems to be a very, very good person. So uh, I've been oh, around cool. her doing uh, like rock and pod type stuff down there and things like yeah. that. So. Yes. Oh, were you guys at the rock and pod? The last one? 
The, the last one was the first one I didn't do, but the uh, <laughs> wow. I, I had done like every one before that. Were you there? Right. I wasn't. No? Okay. All right. Yeah. Um, oh, thank you. It was like a metal fest, dude. It was yeah, like an right. 80s metal fest. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sorry. Like Ricky Rackman was there, right? That Was was that the one you went yeah. to? Yeah, yeah. He was. Yeah, he, he was, he's done a couple of them, yeah. Yeah, he's he was there at this one, too. Yeah. There was a couple guys like that. Paul Gargano, you know. Right? <laughs> guys like, you know. Yeah. So it was cool, though. Whatever. I remember the first time I met Paul, I was just like, Oh my God! It's the Metal Edge guy. Yes, totally. Yes, <laughs> you know. Yeah, but, I don't know. No, like Paul's a good dude. I see him actually. He's he's here a lot. Really? Yeah. So That's cool. Yeah, yeah, he comes around a bit. He's in New York right now uh, for the Biohazard reunion shows. So. Oh yeah, so I would love. Uh, dude, I'll, I got to, I got to see Biohazard at Metal Fest, and it was fucking magical. So I would I would love to see Biohazard oh, again. Yeah. So goddamn good. I wish I could be in New York to see those shows. <laughs> I know. Is that so? Are they are they going to do like a, a tour? Yeah, they're talking about doing a record, doing a tour, like getting yeah. right back into it. Sweet, you know. And everybody's down. Everybody looks good, feels good. Awesome. You know, everybody's getting along. It's like yeah, at Metal Fest, they were all just like everybody was just hanging out with everybody. It just it felt like a good vibe. Awesome. Like they awesome. all kind of, I think they all needed it to happen right now. I think any other time period before this wouldn't have worked. Yeah. So, no, yeah, that's, that's really good. Hard. Yeah. I know. Now suicide. I mean, there's, it's like, like, it's like piecing uh, anthrax and suicidal and hopefully biohazard and maybe even right. Slayer might even come back. Who knows? We'll see. No. No. Nah. <laughs> nah, I wouldn't on that exactly, but yeah, everything yeah. else. There's the blabbermouth headline. John Wysocki <laughs> says yeah. Sane is coming back. Or, I mean, uh, says no, 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 no. I did not say that. Don't listen, don't listen to him. <laughs> and I quote. <laughs> yeah. Well, John, man, this has been an absolute blast. Like we said earlier, man, Break the Cycle is, is a uh, masterpiece of a record. If, you know, yeah. I, if I were you, I'd be insanely proud of it. I'm sure you are, man. And uh, just thanks for taking some time here with us. It was my pleasure. Thank you guys so much for having me. No if you guys are ever in town, Josh, you're not far away. Just uh, hit me up, man. Yes, definitely. Go hang so, out. Thank you so much, John.